Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss additional deductions or additional business expenses that applies to self-employed as well as employee sometime differently. And specifically in this session, we're going to be looking at the educator expense. We're going to be looking at the miscellaneous expenses, and we're going to discuss the moving and the gift expense. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with moving expense. The moving expense are only available now for armed forces and their families. So simply put, the moving expense deduction is retained for members of the armed forces. And the, and the reason we say retained, because it was available for practically anyone, but it, it had you had to meet certain rules. Now, only armed forces on active duty who move because of the military order. That's it. Otherwise, the moving expense is suspended from 2015 to 2018. Business gifts. Well, sometimes what happens is you might give gifts to your customers or potential customers. Business gifts of tangible personal property valued at 25 or less per person per year are deductible. So how much can you give? Not too much. In other words, you cannot bribe your customers. You cannot bribe your potential customers. So you are, you are limited to that. Now, you can give more. That's not a problem. But you cannot deduct. Simply put, the government, it's, no, it's not going to give you. Let's discuss business gifts. What are business gifts? Business gifts is when you try to give someone a gift, a personal gift, to do what? To create goodwill. For what purpose? To grow your business, to attract them as a client, or to retain them as a as an existing client. Well, what 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 can you deduct if that happens? Well, you can deduct the value of the tangible personal property gift up to twenty five dollars or less per person per year. So you can give each individual a max of twenty five dollar per person per year. You can give them more, but you can only deduct twenty five. Now, there's also incidental costs such as gift wrapping. Those are not included, so you can add the gift wrapping cost. Also, if the value of the gift is $4 or less, you know, maybe a pen with a company name on it, or if it's consistent of a promotional material, it's not subject of a $25 limit. Well, let's, let's look at an example. In December, Farhat purchases personalized desk calendar and sends one to each of its clients. The cost of each personalized desk calendar is $50 and there's an additional expense of $10 for packaging and shipping. Well, Farhat is eligible to deduct $35 in total, which is $25 for the gift and $10 for packaging and shipping. And this is what we mean a reasonable amount for packaging and shipping gift wrapping. Also, Farhat sent a stylus with Farhat logo and printed on it for $3. That's fine. That is deductible. Then we could have miscellaneous employee expenses. Well, those are expenses that that an employee can take, and this is a partial list of them. Special clothing, uniform, union dues, membership, dues to professional organization, professional expenses, job hunting in the same profession. Those expenses, those deductions are suspended from 2018 to 2025. Those goes on Schedule A, subject to 2% limitation, uh, but they are suspended for now. Educator expense, many teachers, what they do is they buy their own supplies. They buy their own supplies and they invest money in their professional development. So what happened is this. Those are also miscellaneous itemized deduction. And what happened to those, they are suspended from 2018 to 2025. So what the government did, they created another deduction for that. And they said, Elementary and secondary educator, you are allowed to deduct up to $300 of these expenses for AGI. So although you're an employee, you're, you work for a school, 
if you spend three hundred dollars and we're gonna see what you can spend them or spend them on you can deduct that for your adjusted gross income educator including instructors counselor principal and aides that must work a minimum of 900 hours during the work year and you can deduct expenses related to professional development courses books supplies equipment and material used in the classroom including disinfecting and supplies to prevent COVID-19 again the reason for this is to give teachers a deduction for making this extra effort buying supplies to run the classroom what should you do now go to Farhat lectures and look at additional MCQs that's going to help you understand the concept of business deduction especially the one that are that qualify for employee as well as employers good luck study hard and of course stay safe